Dawn in Brazil had already discovered the origin of her last name. But she told me that she was most interested in learning the truth about one specific family legend. It starts with her great-great-grandmother, Julia Brown, who was born a slave in Louisiana in 1849. Donna wrote in her memoir that when Julia and her siblings were enslaved, a white slave owner named Colonel Charlie Welch tried to split them up, but they boldly refused. What I heard was that uh, when uh, Colonel Welch tried to buy off one or two, the oldest would not let the sisters go. Mm -hmm. He held them close to his arm, and the story went that the, the Brown side of the family, that we, uh, we stick together. We searched for any record of this master, Colonel Charlie Welch, but we came up completely blank. We did, however, find a clue in a most unlikely place, the death certificate for Donna's great-great-grandmother, Julia. It told us that half a century after the end of the Civil War, Julia was buried on a sharecropping plantation in West Feliciana Parish, Louisiana. With this detail in hand, we tracked down tax records that revealed that this property had been owned by a man whose name was very similar to Colonel Charlie Welch, the slave owner from Donna's family story. V.D. Walsh, 1,000 acres, worth $2,500. So the owner of the Welch plantation was not Charlie Welch, but a man named Vincent David Walsh. Walsh. And he, my dear, was a colonel. So that was Colonel Welch. That's Colonel Welch. Okay. Vincent Walsh's papers didn't mention any slaves who matched Donna's great-great-grandmother, Julia. But they did contain an 1856 bill of sale for Julia's sister, Kareem. She's Donna's second great-grand-aunt. This is all right. For the price and sum of $930 to complain to live up. But a full and complete warranty. For the child to say, that's me. Follow an able girl to wit, Peru, age about 14. It's hard. It's hard. According to this bill of sale, Colonel Walsh bought Kareem for $930 when she was just 14 years old. Though it's hard to think about the sale of a child, in reality, this was common. In the first half of the 19th century, the New Orleans slave market, the busiest in the nation, saw more than 100,000 sales and almost a third of these slaves were children, like Perrine. God bless their souls. They, this is, this is, uh, uh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 14, 14 years old. Perrine's master, Colonel Vincent Walsh, was a very wealthy farmer in West Feliciana, Paris, Louisiana. He owned a vast cotton plantation and more than 75 slaves. He was a prominent member of the community. We even found a photograph of him. You're looking at the man who owned your ancestors. Hmm. That's the Colonel. I know. I don't know, I always even thought they were like the Waltons. No. <laughs> Come on, we're slaves. Yeah, slaves. But you know, nice enough to bring you some hot cornbread when it's cold outside. Yeah, he looked like a little stern. Can you see him uh, sending warm cornbread out to the? No, sir. The, I don't think the slave cabin. He looked like he was a colonel. Like he was directing traffic. <laughs> I never thought I would see what he looked like. We looked 
closer at the bill of sale that it first led us to Colonel Walsh and found that he bought Perrine from a man named Charlie Hoffman. So it seems that in retelling the story, Donna's family had simply conflated these two masters into one person, Charlie Welch. But was the family story true that the Browns had somehow managed to stick together, even in 19th century Louisiana? We discovered another bill of sale that proved that Charlie Hoffman had bought Paris at an estate sale less than a year earlier. And Perrine was not the only one of Donna's ancestors sold on this day. Negro woman Biddy, age 38 years, and her children, boy Nathaniel, 10 years, Julia, 6 years, Amelia, 2 years, all together to G.O.G. Williams for the sum of $2,080. Wow. You are looking at the bill of sale for your great-great-grandmother, Julia. That six-year-old is your actual ancestor. Oh, my God. You found her. So they were lucky that only one was sold off. Amazing. 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 Like many family stories, what Donna had heard about the Browns was part true, part embellishment. Donna's great-great-grandmother, Julia, had been lucky enough to stay with two of her siblings, but Perrine had been sold off. Another family torn apart on the auction block. Oh, I'm trying to get my emotions together. Again, you know, it's like as long as you don't know, you don't feel it. But I just, I just, I just felt it. I just felt it. I'm glad I finally know. But the other part of me is, it's the great sadness that slavery always brings to my heart and my spirit. Mm. It's just gonna take me some, some time to just even put this in my system. We have now reached the end of the paper.